many of you who are watching this have seen me create content consistently for months or for years. Uh, I've been doing it consistently ever since 2016 was well 2015 actually middle of 2015 I, I committed to it I started out with you know um, making five short videos a week every week until I got to 100 videos uh, and then once I got to 100 I you know got down to just three videos a week with some blog posts and then blah 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 and on, on and on now I I do um at, I do one new, uh, well, two new videos per week and, and a new blog post per week plus repurposed content. But what I want to say about all this is that it's changed my business and it's changed my life as well. And I wish this kind of consistent discipline for more of you who are watching this. And I'll tell you why. Um, I started, like I said, I started in the middle of 2015 flailing around, not really knowing what I was doing. I was just testing out a bunch of different things. I was, um, you know, thankfully in the beginning already, I was already practicing being okay, making a fool of myself, which is one of the keys to authentic content is the practice of <clears throat> being willing to be embarrassed <laughs> um, because knowing uh, what happens is you get stronger, right? Like you, 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 th you think this is, might be a little vulnerable or embarrassing, but you still think it serves. That's the key. It's not just dumping your problems onto the world, but it's sharing something that may be a little bit embarrassing, but you believe that it will serve your ideal viewer, reader in some way, listener in some way. So I started playing around with this in, in you know, 2015, middle of it, of it. And then I noticed by the end of 2016, so about a year and a half later, I suddenly noticed, and it probably was occurring since the middle of 2016, but about a year, but a year and a half later, being so consistent with it and being willing to be authentic or whatever that means for you. But for me, it was to be, willing to be embarrassed, um, embarrassing. And, and every time I did that, and I saw that I was still alive, and not only was I still alive, people seemed to find some kind of benefit or at least entertainment in it. And, and, and I got stronger every time I did it. It's like, oh, it's okay, to, it's okay to make a fool of myself. Isn't that interesting? Not only is it okay, it's getting me clients. How interesting is that? So... I was going to say by the end of 2016, so within a year and a half, I noticed I had a waiting list of clients and I haven't, I haven't not had a waiting list since the end of 2016. Yeah. For years now, I've had a waiting list. Um, so it's the weirdest, weirdest thing. And, and really it's like I had been in business by that point since 2009 and I was always fighting and struggling to make to make the business work. But once I started practicing being authentically exploring my experiences and you know passions, gifts, interests, and also doing it in service to humanity, you might say, or at the very least to my to my audience, something shifted in my energy my energy signature, perhaps you might say, have got a lot brighter and ideal clients started coming my way. So, so this is why I, I mean, this is only one reason. So I, I want to tell you a couple of reasons why, why this practice of consistently creating authentic content is so important. Um, so that's one reason. The second reason is that when we create authentic content and share it consistently, we start to find this intersection between our passion, our energy, our, our skills and experiences that we want to offer the world and what the world actually wants from us. The quote from Frederick Buchner has guided me for many years, which is, 
you know, the place that God calls you to is where your deep gladness meets the world's deep hunger. I'm paraphrasing that. And you can also take the word God and, and put consciousness or soul or higher self uh, or the universe. So where you are called in this life, particularly in regards to your work, okay, is that intersection, that sweet spot between your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger. And another way I would say it is the intersection between your creativity and the market's wants at this time. You know, it's always, and then that, that circle is always shifting as society changes and as you change. So that's the second reason why we create content consistently because it is an exploration. It's, it is the most powerful tool for exploration that I know in terms of exploring yourself and exploring your calling. Because what are you going to do? You're going to create in your own private you know, room and then try to sell the whole, try to sell what you created to the world. It, as, you, as you know, probably because you've tried it before, usually it doesn't work because we haven't collaborated enough with our audience. And that's what creating content the whole time. It's a, another very um, wise content creator once told me, uh, and this guy has sold you know, New York Times bestseller books. He said, you know, George, creating content consistently is like always having a focus group. It has that same effect. You're always testing your audience to see, huh, I, I, I shared these, the last 10 pieces of content that I shared, which of the 10 really struck a chord? And, and, and then the, the past 10 before that, which one really struck a chord? And then you start to connect the dots and go, oh my gosh, my, con my audience really likes this aspect of what I say and how I show up. And they don't connect as much with these other aspects. That's important to know too. But the problem with us creators is that because we create, it, this is true for all creators, we are automatically biased towards our own experience and our own creations, of course. And the act of spending time and energy writing or creating or recording or thinking through things makes that thing so much more valuable to you than it is to the person who just saw it after it's been done. That's very great. So this is why we have to keep creating, keep sharing, keep sharing, keep, and then notice what works and just be agnostic to go, I don't know what's going to work. I'm going to share my next 10 pieces of content, you know, maybe one, two or three per week or whatever, um, and, and, and go from there. So again, first purpose was, uh, well, first purpose a lot of you are here for is, yes, I want more clients, please. I want more ideal clients. Well, creating authentic content consistently will help you to get there because your energy shifts. And, and I'll say one more thing about that. It's, it's true that the content being shared out there does the social media algorithms and word of mouth does bring people to you. But it's, it's, I, I, I really believe it's not just that the content's being consumed that gets you clients. It's really that your energy shifted because you are willing to practice authenticity really creating from your own voice and your own experiences. And in my case, being willing to, to make myself a fool, to, to make myself embarrassed whenever needed in order to and make mistakes as often as I need to publicly, publicly in on video, especially even, or in writing typos and all, because something about the energy shifts that I think there's, I, I know I'm not a, expert on subtle energy but there's some vibrational change perhaps that suddenly people want to work with you um, more than before it's it's a weird it you could say you, you've built this a level of authentic confidence or the a depth of authentic expression that makes you far more attractive to your ideal clients not to attractive to everybody obviously but to your ideal clients and I think that's why I've had a waiting list since then. So clients, number one. Uh, number two, calling. Some people might think it's even more important than clients. And number three is creativity fitness. 
So all C's here, clients calling creativity fitness. I want to live a long and fulfilling life, don't you? Uh, or at least as fulfilling a life as, as I can while I'm alive. I'll say that, so I'll say it that way. And over the years, nothing has made me more fulfilled and more proud of my achievements than knowing that I am building this creativity fitness muscle, uh, this, which comes through authentic, consistent create, creating. And um, yeah, I feel like I've, ever since I've been creating, I've gotten smarter, I've gotten better at communicating, uh, I have um, just basically kept my mind sharp and kept my heart alive and like excited for, for what's next. Um, and it, I think it spills over into other aspects of life and business as well. So creativity fitness is like physical fitness. You, when, when you practice, you stay fit. When you don't practice, you lose that fitness. And also similar to physical fitness, you don't, you, you, there's a stamina issue. There's a stamina question, meaning you don't just go, I've never run in my life and I'm going to go and run a marathon now. Then you will break down, your body will break down. You will, you'll, you'll dis despise the act of running forever or something. No, but if same thing is, oh, I've never, I'm not consistent in creating right now. So I'm going to now commit to every day for a year, you know, you might make it maybe, and, and, but then you might also collapse and burn out and despise creating for a while. So there's a stamina issue of like building up to it. You have to build up to build up many reasons, build up to just the act of showing up at the computer. I mean, just building up, just there's many things that you have to build up your, your stamina for just being at the computer, for example, that's how most of us create anyway, or however you create using your phone or whatever. There's the act of like wrestling with ideas and like wrestling with a blank page and being okay with that until something happens. And that's their stamina there that you have to build up. And then, you know, a blank page or blank or not knowing what to, how to start the video or whatever, however you're creating. And then there's the act of like publishing, clicking post and feeling the vulnerability hangover again and again and again and again until you're like, okay, I'm, I'm used to this vulnerability hangover feeling i'm used to the feeling of pressing publish and wanting to run away and and you know like hide um or get therapy you know <laughs> publish and then get therapy you know like like that's that's what you know it's all these reasons we need to build up our creativity fitness and but when as you do you start noticing just like with physical fitness you you look at yourself in the mirror and go yep i'm seeing the muscles or i'm seeing myself you know getting into the shape that I want to get into. Same thing with creativity fitness. You, you can proudly look at your consistency and you go, my goodness, how, how did I get to a hundred articles? How did I get to, you know, 50 videos that I've made? Let's keep going. I have so much more. And that's, and that's the last thing I'll say is you will find very importantly that as you create, you'll have even more ideas to create with. Like now, today, I have many, many more ideas than I have ever time to action or put it, you know, create and to put into place. As those of you who have been following my stuff know, like I'm always launching this and launching that. Well, that comes from a creative being creatively fit. That's what I want for you as well. And the byproduct is you will stay mentally fit much longer um, as you as you as your body continues to to stay alive. So. I hope uh, these reasons are inspiring for you uh, and good enough for you to want to commit to the process of consistently creating authentic content. It gets you clients because your energy changes and your content's out there and getting shared, et cetera. You more and more discover your calling, that intersection between your creativity your passions, your experiences, and what the market wants or what the world's deep hunger is. And you build up your creativity fitness, which has so many cascading benefits in your life and for your health as well. So go for it. Let yourself begin 
the process of consistently creating authentic content. And for those of you who would like uh, support from me and the community for doing this, I have a program called uh, The Soul Gym. Just look at the video, look at the notes below the video and um, whatever the program is called at this point. <laughs> if some of you may be watching this years down the road, um, click on the link and uh, there, there you'll see the community of support uh, coaching program that helps you to stay consistent with creating authentic content and teaches you how to do so over time.